Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, the Labour MP Keith Vass has resigned as chairman of the Home Affairs Select Committee in the wake of the Sunday newspaper report alleging he paid for male prostitutes. There had been a suggestion that MPs on the committee might press for a vote of no confidence to force him out, but in the end he went voluntarily with an apology to his colleagues. Michael Crick joins us again now from Westminster. Michael, so he saw the writing on the wall then? Yes, I mean, Keith Vaz is the great survivor in politics, but he realised he couldn't survive this one. Uh, after what was described as a very frank account of what had happened, uh, he told the committee he was uh, st stepping down, not just from, as a member of the committee, but as chairman permanently. Uh, but his troubles are by no means uh, over. Uh, Keith Vaz told me today he hopes to remain a member of Labour Party's uh, National Executive Committee. But Jeremy Corbyn said that that would be discussed at next, meet, next week's meeting uh, of the NEC. And I understand there are likely to be moves by some on the left to dislodge him on the grounds of bringing the party into disrepute. There must also be doubts uh, about whether Keith Vaz can remain uh, a Labour candidate uh, in Leicester, indeed whether he could uh, regain his uh, seat in Leicester uh, at the next uh, election. Meanwhile today, uh, Labour MPs have uh, voted by five to one in a secret ballot to reinstate the system whereby they, Labour MPs, elect the shadow cabinet, uh, rather than allowing uh, the party leader to uh, choose the shadow cabinet, as, got, as has gone on for the last five years since Ed Miliband uh, changed uh, the system. Now, that uh, decision has to be ratified by the Labour NEC and by the party conference uh, later this month. But if it does go through, it may curtail Jeremy Corbyn's powers a bit, although we have, still have the power to decide who gets what jobs and have the power to appoint extra members if he thinks uh, he needs them. Michael, thanks very much. It seems that even Keith Vaz realised this was one misdemeanour he might struggle to brush under the carpet. So, after the revelations about rent boys and cocaine, and indeed, as discussed, washing machines, he gave up his chairmanship of the MP's Home Affairs Committee today, and indeed his membership of it. He said those who hold others to account must also themselves be accountable. But he left the meeting of its members with applause ringing in his ears. They said they had listened in sadness and with respect to what he had to say. When Keith Vaz left home this morning, he was still one of the most powerful backbench MPs in Parliament, but not for much longer. In a private meeting, he told the rest of the Home Affairs Committee he was resigning and recommended that the senior Conservative member take over as interim chairman. The committee listened, I think in sadness, to what Keith um, had to say and with a good deal of um, respect. Keith has clearly acted in the best interests of the Home Affairs Select Committee and the important work that we um, do. That work was at risk of being overshadowed by a third day of newspaper headlines alleging Mr Vaz had paid two male escorts for sex and had offered to pay for cocaine. In a statement today, Mr Vaz said those who hold others to account must themselves be accountable. I told the committee today of my decision to stand aside immediately from committee business and my intention to resign. This is my decision and mine alone, and my first consideration has been the effect of recent events on my family. For nine years, Keith Vaz had chaired the Home Affairs Committee with a punchy style. You're not Sherlock Holmes, are you? Why are you still in your post? I love this country. Do you love this country? We have found your evidence most unsatisfactory. But it is their job to examine the government's approach to drugs and prostitution, so the allegations created a conflict of interest. He didn't and we don't want uh, any perceived or actual conflicts of interest to dominate every single inquiry uh, that the Home Affairs Select Committee is doing. Do you think this affects any of the work the committee has done recently on either drugs or prostitution? I don't think it does affect the work that has been done on drugs or prostitution. Uh, collective decisions are reached when these reports are published. But Keith Vaz's parliamentary accuser-in-chief says this affair is not over. By dragging it on, he's brought Parliament and parliamentarians into further disrepute. Um, he's done the right thing now, but this doesn't end it, as far as I'm concerned. 
the revelations we've seen around Mr. Vaz's life and lifestyle over the last few days, I think, have created huge questions, which Mr. Vaz has not answered. This is not the first time Keith Vaz's name has been associated with scandal, but as he left the Commons Chamber this afternoon, many wondered if he still had the flair for recovering from it he has shown in the past. Uh, and Carl is here to assess this. Carl, we should be clear. I mean, Keith Vaz is still a very powerful politician tonight. He's still got his position on Labour's NEC, well, I don't know what the shorthand for that really National is, ruling committee, ruling executive. national ruling executive, very important in this climate. He's not resigning from that, is he? No, no he's not. Um, uh, interestingly, I mean, he didn't want to appear on camera today, but he was happily chatting to journalists outside the hearing today, slapping people on the back, wandering around with a cup of tea. Um, and I asked him, you know, are you going to resign from the ruling executive of the Labour Party? And he just said, no, why should I? And he seemed quite happy. He said he was feeling fine and he's going to tough that bit out. And I think that's because he has resigned from the committee because of the conflict of interest. But uh, as far as anything else goes, uh, he doesn't think he's done much wrong. Well, th you know, th th let's be clear about this. The committee specifically looks into issues like prostitution and the legalisation of drugs, and that's why he's made it clear he's, he's, he's stepped down from that. But he hasn't discussed the allegations, as far as I know, and he is not admitting to having done anything wrong. That's clear, isn't no, it, he, tonight? He hasn't, let's be clear, he hasn't denied any of this. Mm -hmm. Neither has he said that he's done anything wrong in any of this. Now, um, as far as anyone can tell, no criminal offence is alleged. Some people are asking questions about his offer to pay for cocaine, but it doesn't, it's not clear that criminal offence has been uh, uh, committed. There may be a couple of investigations into his behaviour, but I, I get the sense that amongst MPs, especially on his committee today, um, that they regard all this as part of his private life and therefore not necessarily uh, central to anything he does outside of that committee. And I think for that reason, he feels <laughs> he has toughed these things out before. Yeah. I think he feels that as far as the rest of his political career goes, uh, he might be able to tough this one out, the fact assuming there are no more allegations. Well, yeah, and the fact that he's uh, drawing that line and other MPs are drawing it too is interesting in itself. But we may return to discuss this, Carl, for now. Thank you very much indeed. I've been getting away with it all